a lot of parents these days are thinking ahead to summer because heck, it's, it's pretty much here. And a lot of parents are telling me that they're wondering how they're going to get through this summer. It feels like a really different kind of time. It feels really daunting. You know, maybe in the past there's been a family camping trip or something to look forward to. A lot of those things are really uncertain right now. So it's becoming increasingly clear that we're going to have to find fun on our own home turf whatever that means. And that's going to mean very different things, I think, for very different families. But I would like to think of this as maybe a summer where we can immerse ourselves in some of the simple pleasures, which don't have to be expensive or complicated or time consuming, but that can also be a lot of fun. I mean, I think some of the most fun my kids ever had was making things out of cereal boxes or, you know, going outside with some sidewalk chalk and inventing their own games on the driveway. So I don't know about you, Jean, but I think really maybe there are some good things that could come out of this very strange summer. Yeah, I agree completely, Anne. I think that we, if we could have a, a comeback of play, I think we, can, we would be able to say, well, there has been a silver lining or some kind of silver lining to this. Because what we know is that kids are not playing as much as they used to in years gone by. You know, it's not just an urban myth. People have actually been studying it. And the challenge with that is that play is a huge way that kids learn because they're exploring different roles, they're pretending, they're learning the rules of who goes first, who goes second. There's so many different things that kids learn through play. And then there is the amazing brain building that it does because of the reward. You know, the, the kids love to play, they enjoy it, they're excited, they're in a better mood. Who wouldn't go for that? I think the challenge is, um, that we, uh, we're, we're living in a culture where there isn't very much play. So to parents, I think, are going to really need to think of uh, ways to change their interactions with their kids to be more playful. You know, we're, we have been terrific party poopers of kids' lives, you know, organizing, doing all of these things. And I think, I think it's really important that, um, uh, that we support parents who are going to say, let the kids play. Now, if you're, if you're well-to-do, you've got lots of opportunities, but I sometimes wonder about uh, families who don't have green space uh, very nearby that the kids can run and play. Um, and, and so they're thinking about ways, like you mentioned, about how can you play at home, in, in the house with uh, 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 board games that you can borrow from the library, or, or even uh, you kids can have tons of fun uh, just with pickups sticks. I remember paying for hours and hours and hours with pickup sticks. So keeping it simple is possible, but it's the playfulness that we really need to be thinking of introducing back in our lives, I think. And when I hear you say that, Jean, I just think about that imaginative element so much. Like as a kid, I loved inventing my own board games. And I think in this moment, when we're facing so many challenges in the world, we want our kids to emerge from childhood being able to imagine new possibilities. Because if they don't have that capacity, we're going to get stuck in the same old ruts and the same old patterns that haven't been working. So maybe this could be the summer of play and imagination and new possibilities, not just for for our kids and our families but for the entire world oh i love that idea here we are the optimists unite let's <laughs> hope yeah great thank you